You all know what we're here for. Hello, my Lemon Drop crew, and welcome back to the Lemonade Stand, or welcome if you are new. My name is Brianna. I am a certified personal trainer, a big, huge biology nerd, and a registered dietitian to B. And I tried Beach Body's Ultimate Portion Fix all 21 days. Today on my channel, you guys will be seeing firsthand my descent into madness as I completed the program. And in addition to that, this video is also going to be a deep dive on the Ultimate Portion Fix program featuring registered dietitian nutritionist Ali Zozos. Before we proceed, if you love science-based health, wellness, and fitness education with some lulls and some dry sarcasm along the way, hit that subscribe button and join the lemonade stand. Seriously, do it now. Thank you. Grab your detox water and buckle up, you guys. I went to Chick-fil-A earlier. Who can guess what's in this cup? It's diet lemonade. All right, guys, without anything further, let's make lemonade. Before we get started, I have to say a big, huge thank you to all the people that sent me the supplies to be able to even make this video. One subscriber sent me all the containers I needed. Another subscriber sent me the workbook and the daily logbook. Big thanks to those two people. I don't know if they want me to share their names, so I'm not going to, but big thanks to both of you guys. This video really wouldn't be possible without you. I also kind of blame you too, but... Stay positive, Brianna. Hello, everyone. My name is Ali Zozos, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist, and I work in the virtual private practice space. What is the Beachbody 21 Day Fix? In 2014, Beachbody LLC debuted a program called the 21 Day Fix, which has since been rebranded and is now called the Ultimate Portion Fix. Right out of the gate, Brianna already made a mistake. Sorry. It's a minor mistake, but I still want to make sure I clarify it here. Um, I thought that the 21 day fix and the ultimate portion fix were the same thing. And I thought that it was first called the 21 day fix and then it was kind of rebranded and was now, it is now the ultimate portion fix. As I'm editing this, I double checked and I guess apparently the ultimate portion fix is like the new and improved 21 day fix. Honestly, the only thing I've read online that's the difference between the ultimate portion fix and the 21 day fix is that the ultimate portion fix also includes I guess an exercise program of your choice, but that's pretty much the only difference between them. Anyway, it's not a huge deal, but I just, I still wanted to clarify myself. Sorry about that. It was developed by Beachbody Super Trainer Autumn Calabrese, who is not a registered dietitian and based on my research has absolutely no nutrition credentials whatsoever. I read in a couple sources that when she was in college, she studied dance. Dance is, you know, not like the same thing as nutrition. I have seen some sources say that she's a certified holistic health coach through the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. I'm not really gonna get into a super deep dive on the organization, but all I know is that the health coach program, um, it's not accredited. And regardless of whether or not she has this certified holistic health coach uh, certification, it still doesn't qualify her as a nutrition expert. Something worth noting, the Beachbody Ultimate Portion Fix, or UPF, actually has a certification course that only Team Beachbody coaches are allowed to take. On the Beachbody website, they use quotations around the word certification when they're talking about the UPF certification program. And then they go on to say later on the same page that you don't even get a certificate of completion. So like, what? It's like for show or something. NASM, the National Academy of Sports Medicine, to the organization that I have a couple of my um, my personal training certification as well as some other fitness certs I have through them. NASM apparently accepts the ultimate portion fix certification as a continuing education credit. Somebody told me that I should start a petition on how to do that. And I was like, I love that idea, but I don't know the first thing about how to do that. And somebody emailed me a few weeks ago, like just some information to help get me started. And I just, I'm one of those people that I wanna do things and I'm not ignoring you, but I'm also really bad at doing things. I gotta get on that because that's honestly ridiculous. And I feel like that's like a slap in the face. Let's say you're in college while you're a personal trainer and you take a, take a nutrition course as a credit. And NASA will accept that uh, as a as a continuing education credit, but like they also accept the ultimate portion fix certification, certification as a CEC. Okay, getting off topic, sorry. The big draw of the ultimate portion fix is that it uses a system of color-coded containers to help you track your intake. According to the Team Beachbody website, fix your portions, fix your life. Ultimate Portion Fix is the expansion of one of the most successful weight loss programs ever with portion control containers that take the guesswork and emotions out of eating perfectly sized meals. With supportive accountability groups to help you stay on track, you can reach your goals. 
Okay, so Ultimate Portion Fix. That is my nutrition program that has literally helped millions of people lose weight and keep it off. So when you get the Ultimate Portion Fix Challenge Pack with the Shakeology Home Delivery, it's a $470 value and you get it for $180. Now, I'm not trying to do a sales pitch here, but I just wanna to explain to you guys everything that you get. So you purchase the Ultimate Portion Fix Challenge Pack. You're gonna get access to the Ultimate portion fix okay there's over 30 different videos in there where I walk you step by step through the program how to pick the right path for your goals um, how to meal prep how to use it with your family how to take on special occasions and eating out there's meal plans included in that okay along with ultimate portion fix videos you're gonna get the ultimate portion fix logbook so you can follow along with the videos take notes make sure you totally know it and understand it you're gonna get the ultimate portion fix um, daily log book. So in here you can track everything. You can track your containers, your water intake, your workouts, your mood, your energy, your sleep. You're going to get fixate volume two cookbook, 102 new recipes from me and Bobby, all fix approved. You're going to get your seven color coded containers that come with it. When you get ultimate portion fix challenge pack and your Shakeology home delivery, you're also going to get 21 day fix and 21 day fix real time. Oh, I'm touching things. 21 day fix and 21 day fix real time workouts. You guys, those two workout programs alone are each a $60 value. So the two workouts alone are $120 value right there. And when we used to sell them as DVDs, you only got nine workouts that you repeated over and over again for 21 days. Now you get 42 workouts. Okay. You're going to go through all of those workouts. So that's a huge value right there. Then you're going to get your Shakeology Shaker Cup. You're also going to get one month free of the monthly fix. So that's my ongoing nutrition and support group where we have our Facebook group. We have different topics every single month that we dive into. You also get direct access to me where you can text me directly. People are texting me right now. Um, so you're going to be able to text me. So you get that. You're going to get your Shakeology included, your superfood daily dose of dense nutrition, just like this amazingly delicious shake that comes along with it. And that's a 30 day supply right there. It's everything that you could need. Like I said, it's a $470 value for $180. Girl, do you know how much pink lemonade I could buy at Trader Joe's for $180? And y'all want $180 for some plastic containers, a couple books, and some dumbbell dance workouts. Ain't nobody got time for that. In the program, you use these containers to build your meals. Purple is for fruits, red is for proteins. I have them kind of, it's kind of a Russian nesting doll situation right now. I'll take them out in a little bit. Orange is for dressings and seeds. Green is for veggies. Yellow is for carbs. And blue is for healthy fats. As indicated, by the thumbnail of this video, I did indeed complete this entire program and it was intoxicating. And I don't mean that in a good way. For my own research and now from my own experience, it's not hard to see why this program has garnered a lot of criticism. I have gotten so many messages from you guys after completing this program and after doing it for so long, it left you with an unhealthy relationship with food. And I've had a couple people even tell me that they dealt with eating an eating disorder for years after like, finally abandoning this program and you know in this company and stuff and those of you who've told me that you've battled with disordered eating and eating disorders after being with this company and doing this program for so long indicate to me that you believe that your unhealthy relationship with food is as a result of doing this program can you see a program like this kind of damaging somebody's relationship with food over time oh for sure yeah anything that tells you what to put where and how much of it is a problem and you know i know with my clients i use the my plate as a general framework but it's open for interpretation and it's like we're looking at this as as a plate not like in little container boxes because we don't eat out of containers we eat on a plate we are very visual when it comes to anything but you know we talk about okay well if we're gonna get a health like healthy fats really not in there anywhere it just kind of makes up what's left Mm -hmm. Whether you're having a, an animal protein that has a little bit of fat, you're adding some salad dressing like extra virgin olive oil, but it's not restricting, especially the fats, because even just like using the USDA recommended macros, fats usually what's left over. Like we have a target of it, but even in a clinical setting, we're concerned about protein and we're concerned about calories. Like that's more of a clinical sense. And like, 
if someone were to say, well, how much fat should I get? How much carb should I get? The fat is the last thing that you filter in because mm -hmm. there's going to be fat in everything that we have mm -hmm. just dependent on various amounts in that food group in general. Yeah. So trying to pinpoint exactly how much fat to put in your meals or when it just gets really complicated and it starts asking these questions that aren't big deals. Like they're not big questions at all. Like they're of course valid questions. We want people to ask them, but they become so nitpicky that it's like, just eat, <laughs> Honestly, just eat. <laughs> Something else that has come to my attention that is terrible. The creator of this program, Autumn Calabrese, encourages the use of this program for children, which I have a colossal issue with. Ultimate Portion Fix has helped me with my kids a lot. It's the vegetables that's the toughest part. Last night we made cauliflower tater tots. The kids loved them. Everything has been kid tested. We have fixate meatloaf. I swear the kids eat it. My oldest son just trying new foods and it's amazing. The rainbow chart for the kids, they love that they get to go and check off when they eat something. Little kids are starting to learn what different types of fruits are and vegetables and proteins and carbs. What would the plant eaters eat from? I feel good about lessening the amount of the sugar. They don't ask for fast foods as much as they did before. What I really loved too was kind of the conversation I was able to have with my girls about we eat really good food, not because we're trying to be on a diet or lose weight, because we want to be healthy. I am so happy to be able to address this with them so early on. I'm definitely a fan. Because this workbook is actually awesome because it shows you about our kids and i when i read this i was like oh okay i'll see how much my kids are eating i'm sure i'm doing pretty good keeping track of them so i kind of wrote down what my kids had today too um, i was in shock because here i was seeing that jay he's very active male uh, 9 to 13 years he should be having five to seven servings of vegetables a day five to seven of those I was like, holy cow, no way is he getting that. So, and four and a half to five and a half of these. So I thought, well, that was good. Good for my uh, knowledge and I learned something. So Something like this for children can be extremely damaging to their relationship with food and can even cause them to develop an eating disorder later on in life. It is a fact that childhood obesity is kind of at a rise these last few years. I think I think maybe it was uh, the last year or the year before it was um, kind of on a downslope. But regardless of that, and children who are overweight or obese do have a higher likelihood of struggling with it as they get older. So I do understand as a parent wanting to do your best to prevent that from happening. But I think, this is coming from a non-parent by the way, I think the best way to do that is to just teach them healthy habits and help them understand that all foods fit into a balanced diet because they do. Another big issue with using this system on children is, which maybe, you know, Maybe the creator of this program would know that as she, she went to school for nutrition at all. Just saying. Children do not need you to tell them how much to eat. As a RD to be, a registered dietitian to be, I have learned nutrition through the life cycle, which does include toddlerhood and adolescence. Something that children have that adults just don't have is this instinctual ingrained sense of their own portion control. Young children and toddlers have an excellent sense of self-regulating their own energy needs. They typically don't need you to tell them how much to eat because they know, they can feel it themselves. When they're full, they don't wanna eat anymore. And when they're hungry, they eat more. Parents who have their children doing this program are, are like, even parents who like try to diet their kids, unfortunately, they have the best intentions. They probably think they're helping, but really they're probably doing a lot more harm than good. So the creator of this program is super trainer Autumn Calabrese. She encourages and kind of endorses, and it's even in this book, teaching your children, like applying this program, the container system to your children. How do you, as a profession, nutrition professional, feel about this nutri like this container system, using it on a child? Absolutely not. Yeah. That is the most, can I swear? Can I say fucked up thing I've ever heard? <laughs> well, you already did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is horrendous. Yeah. That's absolutely awful. Children, you know, there's, like pediatrics is not my, my niche or my specialty. I will, will, you know, disclose that. 
but I still went to school and I still took classes on life cycle and what that looks like. And overweight children do not need to be put on diets. Mm -hmm. Children adapt and they grow naturally. Mm -hmm. Increase their physical activity, get them involved with sports, a hobby, something that keeps them active and it will, they will grow. They will grow mm -hmm. out of it. It's like they, they kind of grow in there. They kind of grow into it. Yeah. If there's too much at the beginning, they will grow into it. And you can watch that on the growth charts and the growth curves yeah. up yeah. until I think 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. But children do not need to be, you know, children are blessed with the magic of intuitive eating for they, the most yeah. part. They yeah. like, we they lose that as we get idea. older. We lose that. And, mm -hmm we think that we have to restrict, 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 when really if we just allow ourselves to eat what we want when we want it, we'll naturally stop and we'll, ha we'll find that happy balance. And we lose that. Many people lose that. And that's where we see the birth of intuitive eating and food freedom coming back as adults. And it's so hard to get back to that point. But children are blessed with that naturally. They will stop eating when they're full and they will eat when they're hungry. So we don't need to push clean plate club or push our children to finish everything. They will, you know, give them options, give them choices, but teaching them a strategic system for mapping out their portion sizes at that young of age is extremely problematic. The program being extremely restrictive and, you know, the issues that a lot of people have with uh, using this program on children, all criticisms that I wholeheartedly agree with. So at this point, let's take a look at the ultimate portion fix workbook. So I was actually sent the uh, sent the supportive uh, literature by another subscriber. This is the ultimate portion fix workbook. And she also sent me the ultimate portion fix log book. I do have it here, but we're going to look at it on the computer. Obviously, I'm not going to like read a book to you guys like I'm your teacher. But this is the workbook that we're about to take a look at right now. So we're not going to go through every single page of this thing. Welcome to the ultimate portion fix, a letter from Autumn. When I first created a portion fix, I had no idea that my color coded container system could help millions of people change their lives. Oh, shut up. Until now, a portion fix has been tied to my fitness programs, but I know that the fundamentals of portion control work as a standalone nutrition program. After talking with so many of you, hearing your stories, answering your questions, and sharing my tips, I knew I had to create the ultimate portion fix. Ultimate portion fix. Well, see, now I'm confused because I thought that it was... Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna skim some stuff here. Autumn's favorite things. Shakeology, Beachbody On Demand, Beachbody Insulated Tote Bag, and Fixate, which is a cooking show. Oh, she does it with her brother. Look how happy she looks laying on the ground out there by the pool. Mm, can't relate. Okay, so let's look at this page. Wellness overview. Every 30 days is a good idea to check in with an honest assessment of what's going on with your body. The more aware you are, the better you'll be able to fine tune to feel your best. Circling a higher number means you're doing better in this category. Men can skip the last question. Let's start with today. Day zero. What's the last question? So she's asking sleep, sugar cravings, bowel movements, water intake, energy, skin, menstrual cycle. Uh, Ma'am, I do believe that's none of your business. Thank you. All right, let's skip down here. Some notes pages. Okay, introduction to the ultimate portion fix. This can help the whole family get healthy and will work with many dietary preferences. Principle one. Portion control by eating the food you love, but in the proper portion sizes. Principle two, 40% carbohydrates, 30% lean proteins, 30% healthy fats. Principle three, cut out highly processed foods and sugar. That was it? Oh, I guess it comes with a video. We're not gonna watch the videos and stuff. In a past video of mine, a pretty recent video, I think, I have talked about uh, something called the AMDR, which means acceptable macronutrient distribution ranges. These are daily values that have been established for each of the macronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins. These daily values work for most people in the population. The AMDR for carbohydrates is 45 to 65% of your daily calories. For fats, it's 20 to 35% of your daily calories. And for proteins, it's 10 to 35% of your daily calories. I want to point out that the percentage for carbs that's detailed here in the workbook is slightly lower than the AMDR. Let's move on. Why portion control, bloody, bloody, blah, 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 blah. Portion control is not starvation. It's fueling 
your body for goals and for energy. So you don't overstretch your stomach to help enhance your energy, to help with your digestion, to help keep your metabolism working efficiently. I do agree with most of these, but I just feel like I have to uh, tell you guys, if you eat three yellow containers when you were only allowed to have two yellow containers, your metabolism's not gonna stop working. Just so you know. All right, skip it down here. Melons and macros, blah, blah, blah. Food addiction. Okay. Many processed foods, especially snack foods, are designed to be addictive. I've heard mixed things on this in certain scientific studies. The food industry puts a lot of effort into making sure that once you pick up the package, you don't want to put it down until it's empty. The ultimate portion fix can show you how to reduce slash eliminate the processed foods and can help you beat sugar addiction. Learn to create a healthy relationship with food by replacing the bad with the good. Oh my God, I hate everything about what I just read. If you feel that you have an addiction to sugar, you should seek a mental health professional, preferably one that specializes in eating disorders. Learn to create a healthy relationship with food. I think that's very rich coming from a program that only lets me eat four containers full of f***ing vegetables a day. It's over now, Brianna, you don't need to get so mad again. This book is long, so we're gonna skip down here quite a bit. What's your why, short-term goals, and then some notes pages. Okay, and then looks like they have, these are just examples of how to organize your meals depending on what time of the day you work out. Okay, not so bad. Here we go, carb cycling. Carb cycling is designed to help you temporarily shed weight quickly in a healthy manner without crash dieting. Um, okay, that's the definition of crash dieting. Doing something drastic and excessive in a short amount of time with the intent to lose weight, as much weight as possible. I mean, that's like by definition crash dieting. What the f Is this the twilight zone right now? Use carb cycling only when you have an event or a special occasion coming up. This is very import important to keep in mind. This plan is your ace in the hole but you don't want to use it until you really need it. Keep in mind that carb cycling offers a challenge and it's not for everyone. If you are following this plan, you will be on it no more than three weeks and then take at least three months off before doing it again. Oh my God, I can't blow my lid this early in the video. Relax, Brianna. All right, here's, here's the next thing I wanted to get to. Finding your calorie bracket. It's important to use your current weight to find your appropriate calorie bracket. Use the formula below to help to calculate your calorie target. Do not go down a bracket hoping to lose weight faster. Trust the process and follow it the way it was. It is designed for best results. You will want to recalculate at the end of every 30 days to determine if you need to move into a different bracket. Do not recalculate before then, even if you quickly lose a significant amount of weight. Okay. If you are eating in the maintenance plan but are still losing weight, go up one bracket. Well, this is just very specific and totally customized, isn't it? I'm not sure about the goal with this because portion sizes, we know as dietitians slash RD to be, we know that there is some level of education that has to go into this. That's that's obvious. Like you have to understand what the portion recommended portion sizes are and everything's standardized so you can compare things together. But that doesn't mean that that portion size is going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. Do you like, before you start this, do you calculate something to get your calories or how much you should be eating? Like if you need two starches per meal in that container because you weigh more or more protein because you lift more, is there any individuality with it? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Calculate your calorie target. And then I have, if you're not working out, if you are working out and then you, you know, you kind of decide are my workouts challenging, moderately challenging, things like that. So if you are not working out calculator, if you're not working out, you don't have to exercise to get great results while doing the ultimate portion fix. However, your results can be better when you pair this program with the beach body fitness program, use the chart to find your caloric baseline, your find your caloric baseline uses, use this calculation. If you're injured or not yet working out other than light walking or stretching, then it's your current weight times 11 and that's your baseline. And that's it. And then your calorie target is your baseline minus 400. And like, then they have, if you are working out, your workouts are moderately challenging, minimum of 30 to 45 minutes, five times a week. And then it's the same thing, your current weight times 11, 
and then your maintenance calories is your caloric is your baseline plus 400 and that equals your maintenance so many questions are just populated in my head right now first being <laughs> that way to get that number seems like a lot of work yeah <laughs> two maybe not questions just points concerns. <laughs> <laughs> massive concerns two like let's not be more obsessed with calories or anything like yeah okay three getting your number of portions with the colors i'm just gonna hold up post-its because i have like a million different colors of post-its so let's call these our containers okay how are you supposed to create meals based on like one serving of healthy fat one dressing how are you supposed to come up with ideas that are good that are nourishing to your preferences like i don't understand the application of this like how right. is this how does this work and it is it can be confusing like i said because it feels like you can't eat anything because you're just so limited to okay i have to it has to fit in here it has to fit in this one you know it's it was it was annoying yeah and like not only that but like you mentioned foods come in different breakdowns different nutrient compositions like how like your your protein for example what if you're having chicken over salmon you're not going to get as much fat from that That's so true. like it just makes like i understand like what it's trying to achieve i just think it's creating more problems in the process calculate your calorie bracket to find the right plan for you you'll need to figure out your calorie target using your current weight to find your caloric baseline Important tips they have. If your calorie target is less than 1,200, round up to 1,200. If your calorie target is more than 2,800, round down to 2,800. If you want to maintain weight and are working out, stick with your maintenance calories in step two and skip step three on pages 42 or 43. If you want to maintain weight and you are not working out, stick with your caloric baseline on page 41. Important note, your selection of the exercise options is very important. Overstating or under stating your exercise intensity will dramatically affect your results and experience. So let's go to page 43. Cal calculator, if you're not working out, you don't have to exercise to get great results while doing the ultimate portion fix. However, your results can be better with, when you pair this program with the Beachbody Fitness Program. <laughs> of course it can. Don't you want to do dumbbell dances too? Use the chart below to find your caloric baseline and calorie target. Okay, this is the thing that irked me while I was doing research for this video. Find your caloric baseline. Use this calculation if you're injured or not yet working out, other than light walking or stretching. <sighs> this thing says, use this calculation if you're injured or not working out. And the calculation is your current weight times 11. And that's it. And then that number that you get is your baseline. And then to get your target, you take your baseline and then you subtract 400 from that. I find this very concerning. In general, if someone is healing from an injury, they typically need more energy and even have a little bit higher protein needs. So let's say that I am recovering from a major surgery and I am horribly misinformed about nutrition and I'm gonna do this program. Let's say that I weigh 160 pounds. So we're gonna do that times 11 and get 1,760. And that number is my caloric baseline. Then to get my target calories, I'm gonna subtract 400 from that, which is 1,360. That's what I'm supposed to eat while I'm recovering from surgery. That is not a lot of calories and it doesn't even take into account the individual macronutrient range you need to support healthy healing. So for the millionth damn time, I'm in school to be a dietitian. In school, I have learned that there are a lot of ways to calculate somebody's caloric needs. And there's different formulas and ways to calculate that based on just so many different things that you can possibly imagine. Situations that range from somebody recovering from major surgery. Uh, hi, honey, I'm recording a YouTube video. I'm... Oh. That looks trippy, because they can see my ring light. <laughs> At the time of filming this, Ace is currently gone for training. So for those of you who have been suspicious, I still have a husband. I did not exterminate him. I so said, can I call you back in a little bit? No, because, you know, I was, I was giving you a call before, you know, I started playing my video game. Honey, you and me were just on the phone like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, but I got a new video game, so... Whoa, whoa, 
so I so I can't call you back in a little bit? No, I I don't think you should. Why? What are you gonna be doing? I'm gonna be playing with my my new game. Okay. He's not even here right now and he still finds ways to interrupt my videos. That man. I miss him. He'll be home by the time this video goes up, so none of you try and find where I live in a you know don't try to abduct me. Anyway, there's a lot of different situations and different formulas that you would use to calculate somebody's caloric needs. For people recovering from major surgery, someone who's morbidly obese and on a ventilator, those are just a few examples, but basically, but I'm saying that because you can't use a one size fits all in a situation like that because everybody's energy needs are very different and it's important to be as precise as possible. This is somebody's health, this is someone's life. So for me, while well, on this program, the formula I decided to use was the one on page 45 for uh, if your workouts are extremely challenging. They have not working out, moderately moderate exercise and extremely challenging exercise. And I chose that one just because of my exercise schedule. I do hot yoga one to two days a week. I do cycling class twice a week. I weight train three to four days a week. And then take into account, I walk my dogs a lot. So that's that's the one, that's why I chose that one. So I'm gonna show you guys the calculations that I came up with and we're gonna do that right here and now based on like me and my body and my weight and everything. So I followed the guide exactly how it said to do it and it's your current weight times 11 and that's your caloric baseline. It says this is how many calories you burn in a day. Um, okay. <laughs> Taking that with a grain of pink Himalayan sea salt. Uh, so I'm 150 pounds times 11. That's gonna be 1,650. And that's gonna be my caloric baseline, my baseline calories. So now I gotta find my maintenance calories. So using their calculation, I'm adding uh, 600. Wait a minute. Yeah, so I'm adding 600 to my baseline. And so six, so 1,650 plus 600 is 2,250. And according to these calculations, that is my maintenance calories. Then it says to find your calorie target for weight loss, you take your maintenance calories minus 750, and that is your calorie target. So for me, I did 2,250 minus, yeah, minus 700, no, yes. Oh God, I was so bad at math, I'm sorry. So I subtracted 750 from 2,250 and I got 1,500 calories for my daily target calorie goal. And with that in mind, it's uh, now time to choose my program. Alpha, please stop shaking the tripod. And here on the next few, on these next couple of pages, it says choose your plan. Portion plan A looks like calorie target for that one. These are kind of big ranges, 1200 to 1499. And then portion plan B is 1500 to 1799. And then so on and so forth. It looks like they go as high or they go as high as 2800 calories. And then they go as low as, geez, 1200. So based on my daily calorie target of 1500 calories, I deduced that uh, the the plan that I was going to be following was portion plan B. Yay! Okay, so here I have written down my personal daily uh, targets for each container. Um, I figured out my, my calorie target with the weird calculation that they have uh, on um, in the program. All right, so let's skip down to, oh look, being vegan slash vegetarian on the fix. That's cute. Cool. So let's skip down. On this page, this page is titled Deep Dive Into the Food List. I wanted to see exactly what I was gonna be eating. Summary, the food lists are a great way to get familiar with your containers and what goes in them. If you're new to the container system, you might wanna start with meals where you are just combining foods from the food list and then work your way into recipes when you feel you have a good handle on the lists. The food lists go in a hierarchy. The best of the best are at the top and the foods that are a little less nutrient dense are at the bottom. Well, you know, I have to say, I, I like that she said less nutrient dense and didn't just call them bad foods, so, you know. Half a point for you, Autumn. You can put two different items from the food list into a container at once to fill it up. For example, if you're making a salad, you can fill half a green container of vegetables with cucumbers and the other half with cherry tomatoes. Okay, but uh, tomatoes are fruit though. And then they have foods that fall into multiple containers depending on how they are prepared or ingredients used. Pumpkin pasta sauce and salsa. Then here at the bottom, it says the Fixate Cooking Show on Beachbody On Demand has recipe ideas that are portioned perfectly for the ultimate portion fix. 
Well, that's great. At the bottom of the page here, she just, you know, she throws in that thing about fixate. And I just kind of have a, I have a, I have a sidebar. Let's sidebar for a second about that. I have noticed that a lot of beach body programs, some of the names of these beach body programs are kind of weird. <laughs> like a little bit disturbing to me. Fixate, insanity, 80 day obsession, nine week control freak. To me, names like that indicate like manic preoccupation, dare I say anxiety. I wonder if that's Autumn's way of sending us like SOS signals that she needs to be rescued. But seriously, I just, I just find it a little funny. I have heard some fitness professionals, not beach body coaches, say things like, it takes a little bit of obsession to achieve your goals. Um, I sort of agree with that, but I wouldn't use the word obsession. I would call it like enthusiastic dedication. I feel like using terminology that indicates an obsession or a fixation is not a positive thing. Obsession is an unhealthy fixation with something to the point that it overtakes your entire life. Whereas I see dedication as a healthy desire to achieve something that you're willing to work really hard for. When you're dedicated, you're willing to bust your ass and you know that your goals won't come easy and you're okay with that. I feel like Beachbody just fosters this attitude of no excuses, no days off, no rest days type thing. But I'm just over here like, can I just chill on the couch sometimes? No fitness professional should ever push you to an unhealthy point of obsession with your goals. If your goal is weight loss and you become dangerously obsessed with it, then that opens the door for people to start doing dangerous and unhealthy things just to lose weight. And conversely, if your goal is to build muscle and you become dangerously obsessed with that, that obsession can cause more extreme methods that that may not be safe to look more enticing to you. With obsession, you will do anything to get something, even if that anything will hurt you. Don't be obsessed, be dedicated. Sorry, I didn't mean for that to turn into like a soapbox speech. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Okay, so let's take a look at these food lists. Green container, vegetables, pretty goddamn self-explanatory. Kale, raw or cooked, watercress, collard green spinach, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, Asparagus, meh. I hate asparagus. <laughs> I'll eat it like sometimes, sometimes under the specific circumstances, but the stars have to be aligned in a really specific way for me to eat asparagus and like it. The plus green signs, it says here, are specific foods that Autumn eats and X are foods that Autumn avoids while carb cycling. Okay, I don't really care about what Autumn eats. Cool, Autumn eats 10 large spears of asparagus, so her pee smells very pungent. Awesome. Peppers, cauliflower. Okay, I mean like this is, oh, this is something that I didn't, I didn't notice before. <laughs> Probably should have read this more thoroughly before I did it. Uh, I'm noticing vegetable broth is on this, uh, is on for the green containers. That's interesting. Actually, I don't think I use vegetable broth at all. During it was chicken broth that I used. Never mind. Okay, next one: purple container fruits, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. Something that's funny about this is here it says banana half large, and then there's an asterisk next to it, and then at the bottom it says these food items don't fit in the container, so just use the indicated amount. And the indicated amount here is half a large banana, but. Um, I actually, during the plan, was able to fit a whole banana in the purple container. I just sliced it up, but it perfectly fit. All right, purple container, red container, reds is protein, sardines, fresh or canned in water, seven medium, boneless, skinless chicken or turkey breast, cooked, chopped, duck breast, squab, goat, tofu, pork tenderloin, pretty self-explanatory. And then the yellow container is carbs, what the hell is that in the, oh, it's probably, it's probably sweet potato. I thought those were like cubes of cheese in the picture. They look like they could be cubes of cheddar cheese though, right? But it's, it's probably, they're probably sweet potato slices. Sweet potato, yams, plantains, quinoa. Ugh, I hate quinoa. I just hate the texture of it. Couscous, whole wheat cooked. Oh, gotta be whole wheat. I love myself couscous, but I only love pearl couscous. They're also called Israeli couscous. The other kind of couscous are too, I hate the texture. I think the texture is like too grainy, but I love myself some Israeli couscous. All right, let's skip down a little bit. Blue container, oh, avocado, mash, blah, 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 blah. Oh, and then it says siege and dressings at the bottom. I don't, 
I don't think, I never use this container for seeds. Okay, but wait a minute. It says seeds and dressing, but there's pine nuts on this list for the orange container. Aren't, wouldn't pine nuts be healthy fats? Are pine nuts not fats? I mean, it doesn't matter to me because I'm allergic, but that's, I'm just curious about that. I only ever use the orange container for dressings, as you guys will see in the video of me suffering. And next page, oil and nut butters. EVOO, EVCO, flaxseed, walnut oil. If you squeeze the crap out of some nuts, then the oil will come out. <laughs> oh my God, when did this video get so inappropriate? Cacao nibs, nut butters, peanut, almond, cashew. Alpha, stop kicking the tripod. Next few pages are plant-based stuff. Da, 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 da. Freebies and substitutions. Okay, freebies are seasoned spice, herbs, extra rice, blah, blah, blah. Okay, seasonings and condiments. Here's what I here's what I wanted to skip down to. Okay, water bar. We recommend you drink your body weight divided by two in ounces. If you weigh 180, then that's 180 divided by two equals 90 ounces of water every day. Um, okay, to help you stay properly hydrated, we've created the water bar to make your plain water more interesting. Mixers. <laughs> Flat water, sparkling water, max eight fluid ounces a day. Make sure it has no calories, guys. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, these water recipes look really good. Blueberries, raspberries, splash of fruit juice. That looks good. Um, And they say no more than eight ounces of sparkling water a day. Yeah, I definitely broke that rule. But my sparkling water has no calories, so score one for Brianna. Okay, in the next page, it talks about Shakeology and like some mixers for your Shakeology. Uh, Shakeology tastes great when blended with just water and ice. Oh, that must be a typo. I'm pretty sure right there it says great. I think they meant to type cat litter. Well, if I milk, almond milk, soy milk, geez. Okay, and then we have substitution. So here we get, here, here are our treats. Before I actually started this thing, my memory was very selective and I was like, oh, treats. So I get a whole pizza once a week. <laughs> But uh, no, but apparently even for your treat, you have to adhere to the container system. For example, dried apricots, unsweetened, four pieces, uh, one purple container. That's these, that's this outer one. Wow, that's not restrictive at all. Or I can have six plain tortilla chips <laughs> in the yellow container. Wait a minute, the yellow container, that's this one. You'd have to crush them up. Oh, that sounds awful. And they have containers for different nutritional theories. And uh, to summarize the video, they say ultimate portion fix works for being vegan or vegetarian, but it can work with several other nutritional theories as well, including plant-based and paleo. Why are they calling it theories? Our experience in general is that it does not work with keto or intermittent fasting. <laughs> How does it not work for keto? Just don't use the purple container or the yellow container. There, it's keto. And as far as the system not working for intermittent fasting, what? That makes no sense. Okay, in the fantasy world where I am actually very pro all types of fasting and intermittent fasting, and I just love telling everybody to do intermittent fasting. If you wanna do IF with these containers, then just skip breakfast and move dinner up by like two hours. There, now you did intermittent fasting. Congratulations. I saw a post, uh, somebody, and you guys sent it to me, but I also saw it. Apparently they're updating the Ultimate Portion Fix program to uh, cater to intermittent fasting. And I think she said keto as well. And all I saw with that was, okay, so they're just, they're just trying, she's just trying to keep up with trends. Okay, well, we're gonna finish up here. Uh, frequently asked questions, how do with other non-fixed recipes? It's harder to use with non-fixed recipes, which is why we've given you two cookbooks and a cooking show. Oh, wow. What if I don't see results? The question is, do you sit on a throne of lies? I'm kidding, but let's be honest. Are you really following the program? Are you really following the program? Oh, uh, that's very, that comes off as pretty accusatory, I can't lie. You as a professional, it's not your job to interrogate them and judge them about it. It's your job to kind of help them come to terms with the truth and come to terms with like how much they're really consuming and kind of help them figure out a solution to the issue. Hey, what if my husband and I are in different plans? The containers, what if I'm so hungry? Okay, <laughs> maneuvering your supermarket aisle. I gotta say, this whole program is very thorough, the information in here. I do like that about that. Supermarket aisles can be a tricky place. Yeah, it's a real twilight zone. There are lots of questionable health claims on packages, hidden sugars, and preservatives in these aisles. What's hilarious is that there is health claims on dietary supplements like Shakeology 
You can find healthy options in the aisle such as canned beans, whole grains, healthy oils, and nut butters, as well as nuts and seeds. Okay, um, I can also find fudge-covered Oreos in the aisle, so what's up? With all of that said, let's take... And without further ado, let's dive in to Rihanna's first day of the program. Roll clip. Okay, so to track my stuff, <clears throat> instead of printing out one of these for every single damn day of this thing, I just printed out one and put it in on like a, one of those plastic sleeve cover things, and I'm just gonna write on it with a dry erase marker. I know, I know, super ingenious. I have written down my personal daily uh, targets for each container. Um, I figured out my, my calorie target with the weird calculation that they have. So right now, like I said, I'm not doing gym in the morning, I'm doing gym in the afternoon. So I guess we gotta figure out breakfast now. I definitely need protein, carbs. I don't know, let's do that, that looks good. But how many blues can I have? Oh, I can only have one blue? I want some avocado. I have this avocado. I gotta, I have to cook it. You guys know avocados are, once they're ripe, you have to eat them in like five minutes. Uh, I probably won't fill up the whole thing with avocado, so maybe I'll do like half that. That's okay, right? And how many yellows do I get? Okay, I get three yellows. So I guess I'll do oatmeal and then proteins. I think I read in the program, I think Autumn said that you can boil an egg, slice it up, and like a whole boiled egg, sliced up boiled egg fits in there. So I guess that'll be my first meal. Um, I use that whole container to measure out my oatmeal, but I think I use too much. This is a lot more oatmeal than I actually normally eat. Um, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something about <laughs> it. I mean, I'm gonna eat it, but I need to add stuff to it. I think I'm gonna have to, probably gonna use my fruit container. Um, I like to add frozen blueberries, cinnamon, and a little bit of brown sugar to my oatmeal. So, we'll see how much, I mean, I feel like a pinch of brown sugar is okay, right? We'll see. Okay, hey, here it is, breakfast day one. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish all this oatmeal. This next time I'm gonna have to use half the container. I came downstairs to take a break from doing some work and it's about 12.30 and it's like snack time for me. Um, so um, I need some more water. I'm gonna get some sexy water. And I want a snack, um, I'm thinking yogurt. I think we're gonna do yogurt. I'm going with a sparkling lime, water from TJ, and I'm gonna add one of these things. I like to add these sometimes to my waters. I've never tried this flavor before, it's just pink lemonade. I never add the whole thing. I add like probably half of it and come back to the rest later. Is this okay, Autumn? Is this okay with you? These sticks are like uh, 10 calories total. I hope. I hope Autumn doesn't scream at me for drinking one of these. Okay, and now for my snack, I'm gonna go with yogurt. Um, I get these six packs uh, at TJ. Trader Joe's, sorry, I say TJ a lot. For those of you who don't know, I call, whenever you hear me say TJ, I'm 
usually talking about Trader Joe's, unless otherwise indicated. Um, so they have uh, Meyer lemon and cream and then raspberry cream, and these come in like six packs, so three of each. Both of these flavors are super good. Um, right now, I'm gonna go with lemon. And 140, why is this thing not focusing? 140 calories, six grams fat, 18 grams carb, and four grams protein. So I don't know, what would this be? Um, it's mostly carbs, which, what the hell? What color was carbs again? Okay, yellow, yellow one. So is that how it works? I feel like if I dumped all this in, I could fit it. But there's six grams of fat on it too. So, okay, maybe we'll, hmm. Maybe we'll count this. Oh, but I only get three for the whole day. I don't want this to be my whole one. Damn it. Oh, I'm gonna have potatoes at dinner. This is already getting me fucked up. Where's, where's fats? Which one's fats again? The blue one, blue one. Fats, healthy fats. Healthy. I feel like that's subjective. Only three and a half saturated fat. That's that's not bad. Okay, so I don't know. Do I do I make this? Maybe, maybe we'll do like half. How many blue ones do I get? What? I only get one blue one for the whole day. Damn it! All right, I gotta regroup. Okay, take two. So what I what I decided to do. I remember cheeses were allowed for healthy fats, so I got some string cheese. Ah! This is the um, the light mozzarella string cheese from Trader Joe's. I get this frequently. So I guess cutting it up. This is such an ass pain. All right, good, yeah, it fits. It fits, okay. Oh, wait a second. But we only get one blue. This was, I mistook blues for dressings, but this one is actually dressings, which I actually get one of for the day, which I think that should be, actually, I think that'll be more than enough for me because I'll usually probably do like half of this thing for one salad. So I think that should be enough. So I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and take my, my one blue for this stick of cheese, which I could actually probably maybe fit like another piece in there. Okay, and then I have these crackers from Trader Joe's. They're kind of like knockoff Ritz crackers. They taste the same. Um, okay, so I guess this will be carbs. What color is carbs? Yellow, okay. Um, that fits. I mean, I could fit more. That's good, right? I think that fits. Good, so snack two. I used a blue and I used a yellow. Actually, wait a minute, because I wanna save, huh. This is, this is stressful. <laughs> Did one blue and I got one yellow cheese and crackers and I'm already and I'm realizing that I have already gone over my blue because I this is hard <laughs> I get one blue and I had half a blue this morning in my avocado and then I'm doing one full blue with my cheese okay you know I okay I just won't have any more fats today it is lunchtime now and uh, if you can hear heavy breathing that's my dogs I was getting two of them ready to go on a W-A-L-K, and I heard some thunder, and I was like, oh, it's fine. It'll just be like 10 minutes. And so I got them leashed up, and <laughs> I swear, as I was opening the door, it started pouring down raining. And we just kind of stood there on the porch looking stupid, getting ready to go, you know, and they're all excited. But Alpha does not like anything to do with water. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, let's go, since you want to go so bad. And the her and Onyx walked out from underneath the awning and they immediately turned back around. And look, so now like I put my slippers back on, I took their leashes off and everything. And now the rain has stopped, but the forecast says it's gonna start raining again in 10 minutes. 
I don't know what to believe anymore. And I feel bad because they're like all excited because they thought that they were gonna go for a WALK and now they're not. Anyway, we need to figure out what we're gonna eat for lunch for this 21 day nonsense. Oh, it has already been established that I have gone over my uh, one allotted blue container for the day. That sucks, didn't even realize I did that. Cheese sticks and stuff for me, that's like more snack food, so I don't anticipate me wanting that again later in the day. So one and a half blue containers and I was only supposed to do one today. So congratulations, Brianna, you suck. And then yellows, I get three yellows and I have used, you know, I wrote one there, but actually, remember I only filled it up halfway mm. with crackers. So let's fix that. Half. I'm gonna have my yellow one so I get another half because I want to save a whole one for dinner. God, this is the worst. Um, oh, I haven't used any green. Let's use some green. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'll probably use all my greens for uh, for dinner. Hmm. Do you think uh, that tempura cauliflower counts as a green? Um. Green. Definitely want a protein. Um, there's some fully cooked bacon. I like this. And uh, oh, I have some some turkey meat. Oh my god, smell this. It's still good. It's still good, you guys. I have some spring mix. Guess I'll use this. And um, I guess. Uh, I know, Onyx. I know. Oh, I have an egg. You know, maybe, maybe I would like an egg better. And then, oh, let's try them. Um, let's try that poppy seed dressing. That Meyer lemon poppy seed. Okay, so uh, we're we're gonna do some with this. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, so here's what we got for lunch. I feel like this is just like super keto, <laughs> minus the fruit. I got two pieces of uncured bacon in there, a whole egg, and then some greens. And then my, uh, like I did half of the orange container because I want to save the other half for tonight when I have like my salmon salad with my balsamic dressing, which is seriously my favorite meal ever. Um, so I'm saving the other half of the orange container. And I realized I haven't had any purple today, but I don't have, I don't have a whole lot of my favorite fruit in the house. I really, actually, I don't have any of my favorite fruit in the house. I have oranges, uh, but those are Ace's favorite. Those aren't my favorite fruits. Um, and I had like, I did have this leftover, a little bit of this fruit mix that I got from Trader Joe's the other day. It's a couple grapes, honeydew, and cantaloupe. It's not nearly the entire container here, um, but it's it's what I have. It did come with pineapple, but I don't like pineapple, so I'm not gonna eat it. I'm gonna Google if pineapple is safe for dogs, and if it is, I'm gonna give it to the dogs because I do not like pineapple. I'm allowed to eat three of these purple containers, but this is barely one, and I don't have any more fruit. So maybe after the gym, I'll stop by Walmart and like get some bananas, because bananas are my favorite fruit, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna skimp out on my what little calories I get. So here it is, here's lunch. Okay, about to go to the gym. <clears throat> that salad was, uh, the salad was pretty good. Wish it was, uh, you know, a little bigger, had a little more to it, but what are you gonna do? Um, that dressing was really good too. Going to the gym, and let you guys know, I just ate two tablespoons of peanut butter. Cause I forgot, I get four tablespoons of what was it? Like nut nut butters or something for the day. So, you know, things are getting pretty serious. And I had two. 
So that was like a nice dessert <laughs> to that whole salad I had. So I'm gonna go to the gym and lift for an hour and then I have cycling class right after. So that's where we're at. So I am back from the gym. Um, I lift, I did an upper body lift for like, I don't know, how long was it? I got, I got there at about four, uh, 45 minutes. And then I had a really awesome 15 minute stretch and then I had cycling class for 40 minutes after. So feeling great. And like I said I was gonna do, I stopped at the store and I got some fruit. I got bananas. I got bananas, and what's funny about the bananas, I wanted one right now, but they just had mostly ripe ones, so I got two not ready ones, and then I got one that's ready to go. So I'm probably gonna eat this right now, and then, this just enticed me. I was looking for strawberries, and then I found this, um, this strawberry blueberry blend, and the strawberries are already uh, washed and sliced, so I was like, oh hell yes. So, um, looking forward to eating that. Where's the damn fruit one? Okay, uh, purple. Okay, so I think I can fit a whole slice banana. I'll slice it up in there. And if I can fit some strawberries and blueberries in there, I'm gonna try to as well. And then I'm gonna enjoy a whole tablespoon of peanut butter. Wow, I'm really spoiling myself. All right, guys, it is dinner time right now. It is like a little after eight, so. Night dinner for me, but no big deal. Um, okay, now I gotta count how many damn containers I have left. I have no more blues. And um, for the orange, I get one whole orange. What the hell, what was the orange again? Oh, my dressing. Okay, so I have half an orange left. And... I get four greens today and I've only used one green. Okay, oh yay, I get three whole cups of green. And then purple, I get three purple. What was purple? Oh, purple was fruit, okay. I get four protein and I've had two so far. Okay, so I get two protein. What's yellow again? Damn it. Carbs, okay, okay. Uh, yellow yellow i get three and i've used one and a half okay so i get another one and a half of those all right here's the plan so the main course of this is going to be i have salmon i thawed this out last night i'm going to eat it today i've been looking forward to it i'm going to no one's gonna look at all the crumbs in my toaster oven uh so what i like to do is i cook it in here and I just started the broiler, and I'm going to toss and season these. These are baby Dutch yellow potatoes. I'm just going to, like, quarter these. And uh, I'll broil those. We'll see how that turns out. I don't, I don't even know if broiling potatoes is a thing, but that's, that's what we're going to do. And then I'll make a big fat salad. Well, three green cups of salad. So uh, let's, let's see how this goes. Okay, here's my salmon. And for my salmon, all I just do is salt and pep, and these two, both these seasonings, both from Trader Joe's, 21 seasoning salute, and then garlic powder. And I put the exact same seasonings on, um, on the little potatoes. Okay, I just came down here. Uh, I want it to to edit for like 10 minutes. My salmon's done. Looks beautiful. What I'm gonna do now is broil it for just like two minutes because I like it to be nice and crispy. Um, we're gonna, I felt like I smell something kind of burning, burning smell. So let's see how these little baby potatoes are doing. Oh, they're not that bad. Oh, they're not that bad, right? They're not that bad.
here's my salad. As far as vegetables, this is what I typically like to add to my salad. I like to add feta cheese. Honestly, the feta is probably one of the best parts of this for me. Um, but I don't have any more blue blue container, so I can't add some cheese. So let's go and get some protein, and then we'll add dressing. I needed another red one. Really, I need two sliced boiled eggs to fill this, but I don't have two more boiled eggs, so. I just put one ball in, and now I'm eating it. Sorry, this isn't supposed to be a mukbang. Okay, so let's see where we're at for dinner. I had three greens. What's purple? Purple's fruit. I didn't have any fruit. Um, the red's protein. Uh, one protein. Yellow. Oh, that's carbs. So I had 1.5. And then uh, the blue, no, I didn't have any blue. Uh, orange dressing, another half one. So now we're gonna see where that puts me for the day. So my greens, I have four greens, my purples. I did 1.5 purples, so my greens are, This I'm doing this in a really stupid, confusing way. My greens are done. And then my reds, I have, th I'm down for three reds. Uh, so I have one left. Jeez, I don't know how I'm gonna, oh wait, no, I had an egg, I had an egg. So, but it didn't fill up the whole thing. So I would call it like, I don't know, 1.5. So total I had two, three and a half reds. Okay, we're just gonna have to round that up to four and say that I'm, I'm done with reds. Yellow was carbs, one and a half, one and a half. Okay, so carbs are done. And then orange, oranges, oh, orange is done. I had my dressing. And then, oh, I had, I have two tablespoons of something left. Man, this is stressful. So as of right now, I have, no, I don't have any more protein. So I have two tablespoons of something left. And then I have uh, one and a half purples left. Purple was fruit. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. So here's dinner. This looks actually really delicious. I I normally go for my, my balsamic dressing on my salmon salad, but I wanted to tr see how that Meyer lemon poppy seed would try. I liked it earlier. So I wanted to do that one again. And then I have my my blackened baby potatoes. Oh my God. <laughs> I think that about wraps up day one. I don't know what I'm gonna eat for two more tablespoons of something and then another one and a half purple container. So maybe I'll have two tablespoons of peanut butter again. I don't know. Whatever I decide, I guess I'll let you guys know. All right, I finished my dinner, but I just could not finish. <laughs> oh, I added some hot sauce. I just could not finish my damn, these little potatoes. I keep saying, oh, they're blackened, like I'm a fancy ass chef. Let's just call it what it is. Brianna burned the f out of these. My bad. And I ate it, I got through a few of them, but the rest of these are just inedible. So, bye bye. You know, now I know again for next time. I would say that that concludes my first day of the 21 day fix. I'm going to have two tablespoons of peanut butter. Really looking forward to it. I like peanut butter. And then my salmon skin I'll give to the dogs. Yeah. <sighs> I will provide my thoughts in the video.